let's start. Um, today we're going to talk about uh, XDAI and the uh, tools of POA, uh, which we used to launch this network. I hope you guys enjoyed uh, Buffy Coin, Buffy Day, and uh, enjoyed uh, you know this fast transactions, seamless payment, and uh, fast settlement, and also it's quite easy to use, right? So several technologists um, used to build the infrastructure. And for sure, a lot of technologies used to build uh, the wallet. I'm going to talk about infrastructure and how it was possible to make this network and which tools we used for it. So for, for you guys who are hacking, uh, I'd like to say that we have uh, 5,000 uh, uh, USD worth of DAI for the top 10 dApps deployed on POA network or XDAI plus one special prize for the best uh, zero-knowledge solution for POA or XDAI. So criteria is very easy. Um, you have to deploy an, an Ethereum DApp on one of these networks or contribute to one of uh, POA products like Black Scout, which is open source blockchain explorer, or Token Bridge, which is our interoperability solution, or to Burner Wallet by Austin Griffith. So quite easy, right? Just deploy an app and you can participate in our bounty. So if less than 10 dApps will be deployed, then um, these dApps will get more uh, share of this uh, stake. OK, so what do you need for hacking? Um, you can use our Blockchain Explorer, uh, which is full-featured Blockchain Explorer for POA uh, or XDAI. And today, our friends from Bloxy uh, started an instance of uh, Bloxy Analytics for XDAI, so it's also cool to use. You can use uh, Faucet uh, to get free coins on our testnet. And we have uh, multiple links with uh, resources. All of them are located on uh, POA forum. Um, so it, you go to forum.poa.network, and uh, you can see what, everything you need to deploy your dApp uh, on POA or XDAI, right? RPC endpoint. Uh, web services endpoint, um, full archive node if you need, spec files if you would like to run your node, um, you know, all other stuff. So today, it's all about XDAI. Uh, XDAI is a first ever USD stable, uh, USD stable sidechain with uh, DAI as a native token. Right. So it started uh, uh, as a project, as a hack project on ETH Berlin. And um, today we have it live, and it's used for uh, payments. So that's kind of cool, right? Um, what's uh, different uh, within um, uh, XDAI from technological perspective? Some words can be new, uh, and I will explain them later. So XDAI itself is a side chain of Ethereum 1.0. So it's a new network based on existing protocol, but with different security model, different economic model, and different state. The idea of this network is that there is a validator set, like some authorities, who can uh, modify this list of authorities using on-chain governance. Right? This is a consensus algorithm of this network, and it's, uh, this consensus made it possible to make it cheap, scalable, fast, efficient. So the native token uh, on this sidechain is XDAI. What is XDAI? It's bridged token, so token which is locked on Ethereum side and minted on the uh, XDAI chain side. So this process is known as hard spoon when emission of uh, one token is spread across multiple networks. I think uh, XDAI is uh, one of the first uh, hard spoon in production. And uh, the great thing about uh, this type of hard spoon that uh, the token is stable, right? So one die is always equals to one X die. When you lock one die on the Ethereum side, you will get one X die on X die side. When you want to get back, uh, exit from the side chain, you burn your X die, and the network will unlock one die for you. To make it possible, the mechanism called block reward which is usually responsible for uh, emission of, uh, of a network, is uh, hooked to token bridge, which is our interoperability solution uh, between mainnet and Ethereum. 
So consensus of XDAICHI started without pre-mine, so it started with zero tokens, and also it started with a zero emission curve. It means that uh, inflation in this, in this network equals zero, right? So like each block, each block, a new block um, which is created, created without block reward, and um, it will be from the beginning till the, uh, let's say, uh, end of this network. Um, in, in, in most uh, chains, there is some form of block reward uh, and emission curve, but in, uh, in, uh, in XDAI chain, emission curve is empty. It's, uh, we think that uh, XDAI chain is uh, irresistible to use. <laughs> I read this uh, uh, term in the, in the marketing book, uh, but I like it very much uh, because uh, when you try it and you can see that um, you can have uh, a familiar platform with uh, stable user balances, with uh, stable user fees, uh, that brings so many opportunities, especially with uh, real world applications, right? Um, people who receive their uh, XDAI today will have the same amount of XDAI tomorrow if they don't spend them, right? Um, and the good thing about um, using of DAI is that there is a massive available liquidity, liquidity of DAI on the Ethereum mainnet. So one can take uh, this DAI and bring it to XDAI and increase market cap uh, of XDAI. Now market cap of XDAI is $8,000, which is one of the smallest blockchain in public space, right? Uh, but we can see that it's, it's used and uh, can be used for uh, scalable real-world applications. So it's fast, and most blocks are with empty capacity. Before, we used the word empty, but I think empty is not, is not a good word, because when you think empty, like no one's using it. Here, it's a bit different. When you have empty capacity, it means that network is ready to accept your transactions. And execution is very inexpensive. It's possible to make it's free at all and replace uh, with um, a different model like um, transaction fees on uh, exit from the bridge. But this uh, uh, small gas fee uh, is good to uh, have possible mitigation of uh, denial of service attacks. Also interesting about this small but real and public network is that it's a self-governed DAO. It's, a, it's not a network created by POA. It's not a network owned by POA. It's a network owned by DAO. This DAO is an exclusive form of DAO. Not anyone can participate. Um, but people who are in DAO can invite new members to this orga organization. And um, each of them uh, has equal right to invite new members to the DAO. So stamp stats. Um, um, I don't know. Well. Ethereum, uh, I'd say that um, XDAI chain is not ideal yet, right? Because um, uh, from our perspective, it's uh, decentralized, but it's what we call minimum viable decentralization. So it's decentralized enough to comply with uh, regulation and, uh, and uh, enable on-chain governance and uh, this uh, form of uh, DAO, but it's not as decentralized as uh, some other chains. Uh, the very important thing that um, when you think about volatility of uh, platform usage, uh, in, uh, in Ethereum, you have a volatile uh, uh, token price and volatile uh, gas price. Uh, in POA Core, our first sidechain, we made uh, uh, native token uh, ex platform execution stable, so it, it costs uh, 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 gas price is stable and um, can be changed by on-chain governance. But uh, validators, uh, you know, not not increasing it uh, for like a year and uh, and uh, and three months. So it's like good stable uh, gas price. Looking uh, back, uh, but in, in XDAI chain, uh, the uh, native token price is also stable. So if you design your let's say game with uh, some economic parameters, um, uh, it will be stable, and you can plan ahead platform usage. Uh, this is not from a uh, marketing book, uh, but uh, I'd like to add that it's irresistible to scale. 
if one would like to scale the system, it's uh, scalable both uh, vertically and horizontally. So vertical scalability is, uh, is interesting and I think it's underrated uh, in our ecosystem. There are some public chains with uh, 100 million uh, gas per block and they exist for, uh, uh, let's say, for, for a year. Um, uh, and it means that uh, we can simply upgrade, um, we as validators can simply upgrade uh, and tune parameters of this network and uh, if we see more usage, then likely validators will upgrade this uh, protocol. And when you have, let's say, four validators or 10 validators, and uh, they are uh, responsible for the uh, small DAP chain, it's, it's more, more likely that they will agree on the upgrading parameters of this chain to bring more users. Uh, so second type of scalability is horizontal scalability. That's what we s sometimes it's called like, it's sharding. Right, um, and um, it's relatively easy to launch XDAI chain for DAI token or for another token, and uh, at least two projects already launched same type of environment, but with different uh, uh, ERC20 token, uh, which act as a native token. And when I think about this, uh, I like the idea of uh, World of Warcraft realms. When World of Warcraft started, you had to select on which uh, shard you're gonna play, and uh, if you, let's say, uh, unlucky enough to, to be on a shard with uh, where most players are from a different language group, it was kind of a problem, right? Um, uh, and also it was not possible to migrate from shard to shard. But later on, World of Warcraft uh, created this system where you can transfer your character, basically non-fungible token from realm to realm. And now, if you open their uh, website with uh, you know, status of the, of the game, you can see that there are you know, so many shards available uh, with uh, different settings you can play against other people, you can play against uh, um, like PvP or PvE, you know, like it's, it's, it's much more um, capacity than uh, players, right? So World of Warcraft is ready to accept more players and ready to accept these players immediately. But back in days, it was different. So they, what they changed, they added more shards, they, they made the shards specific to what player need, and uh, they need to have different language groups, they want to have some uh, uh, different uh, play uh, game rules, like PvP or PvE, and they added more shards. And it's enough, right? So right now they don't need more shards, and this is working, and uh, this is a good example uh, how DAP chains can scale horizontally. <coughs> So now we'll, I will show you some um, uh, underlying technologies uh, for, 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 uh, for XDAI. So let's start for, from governance because it's uh, the most important part of, uh, of our consensus. Uh, the main question people asked when we launched uh, XDAI, who are validators? So this information is uh, available using a DAP or acquiring smart contracts. And this information um, available from, from the chain. So there is no like, uh, uh, database between this DAP and, uh, and the public RPC, so all information public from public RPC. Um, you can see that uh, at XDAI there are four validators, uh, Giveth, uh, POA, uh, MakerDAO, and Protofire, and uh, it's, uh, it's possible to add more validators. Each validator from of, on this network can propose a new validator, and the uh, majority of uh, validators are required to onboard new validator or remove validator from the network. We can see some past governance decision, how validators voted for, uh, for governance decisions. So the, uh, the last one was a, a change of uh, uh, implementation of uh, a reward by block contract. Um, we uh, proposed it to mitigate one uh, uh, bug in, in, in parity implementation, uh, which uh, was possible to solve uh, using uh, different implementation of smart contract. Validators uh, uh, voted for it, and uh, this implementation uh, can be automatically enforced on chain. So it's enforceable on chain governance managed by independent validators. Right uh, here, you can see that uh, uh, first of all, they uh, agreed to deploy a new proxy storage contract, uh, and before they removed some extra validators that left from. Um, uh, initial ceremony of this network. 
And uh, all governance decisions are available on chain, and uh, anyone can uh, independently cross validate who voted for, for these uh, uh, governance decisions, who initiated them, and get all stats about this uh, governance. When we um, attend some conferences and we hear about on chain governance, sometimes people talking about you know, this enforceable on chain governance. Here we have this enforceable on chain governance for, for the second year. And uh, it works well. And if we switch from, from XDAI to another network, to POA Core, uh, where we have much more validators, uh, 22, I think, uh, we can see that uh, um, there are ballots with uh, uh, you know, 16 votes, four uh, out of 22 validators. 22 validators. Um, so governance mechanism not only working, but it, uh, uh, it working well on scale. So when we have uh, uh, more validators, the governance process is also, uh, is also working uh, scalably, right? Um, so third part of governance is uh, actually proposal of new validators. And um, for this, um, I have to have a special key, what we call voting key. And uh, any validator can propose a ballot to, for example, add new validator, remove existing validator, or swap key of validator. And um, in this governance app, you can see uh, current thresholds. For example, to add new validators to XDAI, uh, three validators should vote uh, four, and, um, and there are some thresholds to prevent, uh, to prevent this governance mechanism from abuse of, let's say, malicious validators, right? Which is also possible. So this model is working for POA core, but also working for XDAI. It's scalable. You take it, deploy on your side chain, and you get the same security model as uh, POA and XDAI have. And um, when we think about proof of work networks or proof of stake networks, it's relatively hard to copy security model to new instances uh, of uh, chains, right? If proof of work that if we want to copy a security model to proof of work, of proof of work system, we have to deploy uh, new mining hardware, and uh, it's a scarce resource and uh, you know very expensive. With proof of stake, we need to get uh, initial valuation of the stake somewhere, uh, and uh, with uh, this type of consensus, this model can be scalable to many shards. So second part of the um, uh, second part of the uh, of, of the uh, of the uh, XDAI model, which uh, and that's a part of our um, development tools, is a token bridge. It's an interoperability solution for uh, tokens on Ethereum network. Uh, it works with in different modes, and uh, for uh, for XDAI, uh, there is a mode where tokens can be locked and unlocked on Ethereum side. And uh, new tokens can be minted on XDAI chain side, and these tokens are connected to consensus of the side chain. But this bridge can be used to bridge uh, ERC20 to ERC20. For example, one can take DAI on uh, Ethereum side and mint representation of this DAI on, let's say, Ethereum Classic side. Right? It's, 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 possibly, it's possible right now. Uh, and this bridge is in production since uh, May 2018. And that breached tens of millions of tokens cross chain. Uh, and uh, let's check stats for um, uh, for for, imp for implementation for uh, die bridge. So for die bridge, this stats is uh, generated from uh, public RPC. We can see that uh, totally minted by bridge is uh, something that uh, is uh, uh, is it, it is a market cap of X die. So market cap is 8,000 die. Uh, but people bridged um, back and forth 40,000 DAI. So they deposited, uh, returned back. So that's the, the, the economy of this bridge since the beginning. And we can see that almost 500 users used this DAP uh, to bridge tokens back and forth. And it's quite interesting. Um, uh, so these users are the same users on both sides because our bridge supports only self-transfers. Self-transfers means that uh, uh, users can send funds to only to themselves. And uh, this allows to make uh, a bridge 
which can be considered as, a, a, let's say, decentralized bridge. And, uh, and it is and not required uh, to have money service business license uh, to send tokens uh, between networks uh, for users. Um, likely doesn't require. I'm, I'm not a lawyer, right? <laughs> uh, but we have legal opinion on this topic. Um, and um, this bridge works in, uh, in production. You can see that uh, if I want to convert some X die to die, I can send, let's say, 10 X die. When I press transfer, my X die is uh, burned, and uh, an event is emitted on the X die chain side, and uh, three or four validators of this bridge observe this event, and after they see the same event um, after a threshold of blocks, which is eight uh, for, for this network, and uh, this threshold is required to, 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 to make sure that uh, the network is final, and that not reworked or uh, forked. Uh, and, uh, and after eight confirmations, uh, validators will relay this uh, event from XDAI to Ethereum mainnet, and uh, they will unlock 10 DAI for my account. You can do the same in Burner Wallet or uh, Buffy DAI Wallet, and it's, uh, and it's even easier on, uh, on, on burner wallet um, because you can make it on the go with your with your phone and without having uh, metamask installed so it, it's quite easy to use okay uh, let's see so now it's a uh, it's a slow part because now we need to submit transaction to mainnet and uh, mainnet uh, not always uh, have uh, free capacity uh, and uh, sometimes our transaction is waiting for uh, um, to be included in the block. Okay. Verifying transaction. So, as I said, the bridge uh, it, it's uh, uh, it's a quite complex solution. It consists of uh, five different parts, uh, and uh, there are smart contracts on uh, on uh, both sides of uh, of the bridge. Uh, there is an Oracle service, and uh, this Oracle replicated for Oracle service replicated for for all validators. There is a UI applications which we just used for um, uh, to transfer tokens. There is a bridge monitor when we can see and uh, and put on monitoring that uh, balances of validators are uh, not empty, and also that uh, there is no differences in the uh, uh, locked die and the printed X die. So th this is good for uh, audits, um, and I can show you. That, uh, uh, that's, uh, okay. Yeah, this um, th this information is um, you you can see. Um, uh, in the bridge UI, you can see number of validators and uh, number of required signatures. So to relay transaction from um, from XDAI to Ethereum, three signatures from four, four validators are required uh, to uh, to relay this event. And you can think about this as a 304 multi-sig, which is quite secure if uh, validators are independent from each other and if they host on their own hardware and uh, uh, yeah, they use this uh, software as it's designed. Okay, so let's, let's see if, if we got our, no, it's still, it's, we're still waiting for mainnet. Um, okay, the, the third part, which is important to, uh, to make sidechains usable, is a open source blockchain explorer. Uh, we have an open source blockchain explorer called Black Scout. It's a, Fully featured explorer, friendly to test nets, private networks, side chains, open source and free, um, funded by us, uh, uh, sponsored by Ethereum Foundation and uh, Gitcoin bounties. Uh, we built it because uh, Etherscan was not available to test nets and um, it was kind of hard to add a new functionality. For example, on XDAI, you can see that, uh, uh, where is it? You know, there are validators, right? And uh, on Explorer, 
we might like to see who created blocks, like here, right? Like POA network created blocks, Giveth created blocks, Protofire, and uh, on either scan, let's say if either scan will host XDAI, there is no way for us to to mod to uh, propose these changes and uh, implement them, right? Because it's not open source. Let's see, by the way. Um, Yeah, you can see the problem on Gordley testnet, which is a new Ethereum testnet. On either scan, all validators like, you know, zero zero, right? And uh, you know how to how to put names here. Uh, let's go to Black Scout um, and uh, switch to Gordley. And here we know, we can see that, you know, consensus is validator, POA, Parity, Prism Labs. So you know who created your block, right? And um, yeah, that, that, that's the beauty of, uh, of open source software, right? Um, yeah, like uh, it supports uh, all features we need to, de to develop applications. And when you think about um, side chains, if you deploy a new side chain and you don't have a, a explorer for it, like full featured explorer, it's kind of hard to, to develop applications, right? Um, so that's three things uh, which made uh, XDAI possible. Uh, first thing is uh, uh, fast and efficient consensus with a, with a scalable uh, model. Uh, second part is uh, interoperability protocol, which allowed us to uh, experiment with a new type of um, uh, emission and a new type of uh, uh, creation of supply. And third part is uh, developing tools. That's what made possible from our side, right? And um, also, it's great that community liked this idea and built a burner world on top of it and made this thing with uh, um, electronic peer-to-peer -peer cache system, which we use today, a real thing, right? Still very fine. OK. Um, Today, uh, blocksy.info uh, also indexed uh, this um, uh, XDAI chain, and they have interesting analytics. So, if you if you deploy an app, you can uh, get uh, some. You can see who is the biggest uh, token holder <laughs> of, of Buffy Dai, you know, total supply, and uh, all this data. Um, Okay, it's time to ask questions. Questions, questions, questions. Um, how many transactions were done today? Uh, what is it? I think it's transfer with data. Uh, that's what they use because uh, when you when you when you purchase meal, you put like meal in in a message. So that's uh, I think like uh, 940 purchases of meal during the lunch, which is great, right? And uh, what I like about uh, side chains and uh, and XDAI especially, that when you look into um, market cap and total transactions and number of wallets. You can see how how this economy, like a real economy, is working, right? It's not something like pumped on uh, on uh, on open market, like you know, uh, with uh, some some chains, where you can see tens or hundreds of millions of dollars, uh, and um, but no real usage, right? Here you can see people breached 8,000 8, XDAI and uh, created 36,000 transactions, and uh, you make you can make sense about these transactions by using analytics like Bloxy. Um, and um, this is a great example of um, application-specific sidechain. Like, this sidechain is designed for payments, right? Uh, programmable money. And uh, different sidechains can be designed for, um, uh, for different use cases. So, uh, your question. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so um, about block. Block Scout, uh, it's going forward well. I noticed that the features have now like the contract verification. Um, can you actually look into like um, some 
content in there. And another question, like, is the block scout, like, if I clone the repo, is it so, so that I could say, you know, run some Ganache instance and uh, have this thing in, uh, index that and, and browse around, kind of. Is it so lightweight that I could try looking into a, what's happening in a... Some, uh, if you would like to run Black Scout on your laptop, yeah. it's, it's, it's totally feasible, yeah. uh, but don't index mainnet, because it will take three terabytes of uh, Black Scout data, plus two terabytes of parity data, so it's yeah, like... No, I was more thinking, like, if I run, like, whatever uh, dev setup um, on, on, like, Ganache, like, some yeah. local instance, it's often kind of hard to look into what's actually going on the, in there. So this would be great. Uh, have you tried, like, running a Block Scout on, like, local Ganache instance? Yeah, that's, yeah, okay. it's possible to run. Is there, like, a tutorial on that, or...? Uh, yeah, whatever. I'll yeah, just try it out. Yeah, you can try it out. It 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 it's, it doesn't support uh, all uh, RPC as as parity client, especially some problems with traces, as far as I remember with Ganache. Yeah, but yeah, you definitely can run it. But yeah, maybe better to run local parity node and uh, it's the same. Yeah. Last question. No questions. So, no, 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 yeah, it's, it's okay, yeah. Um, yeah. Any questions? So it's one next day, who wants to take it? Yeah, just, you know, first guy, <laughs> we'll get it. <laughs> Anyone? <laughs> free money. Free, free. Yeah. Did anyone get it? No? It's one next day. Next will be five. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Did you get it? No? Yeah, I think it's it's a link encoded here, so you need to um, open it. No? Okay, yeah. Yeah, someone took it. Okay. Five. <laughs> One more. Okay. <laughs> Did anyone get it? Okay. Last one. Last one. Last one. Okay. One second. One second. Ten X die. <laughs> Uh, battle royale. <laughs> okay, guys, 10x day. <laughs> Did anyone get it? Yeah, people, yeah, people don't want to, you know. No? Claim it. Yeah, okay, guys. Yeah, someone was faster. Yeah, so someone was faster. Okay. Yeah, thank you, guys. I hope you enjoyed it.